Previously, we have described a compound as being a combination of two or more elements in a specific species. And we said that these elements were combined in specific proportions. So those proportions are actually better qualified as being called molecular formulas. So molecular formulas are generally written with the symbols of the elements that are involved in the compound. And then we put subscripts just to the right of the elemental symbol to say how many of each type of atom is present inside of the molecule. So when we look at Fe2O3, that means this compound is made up of iron and oxygen in specific proportions. But it says that in every Fe2O3 molecule, there are two irons, and that's what the subscript two means, and three oxygens. That's what the subscript three means. And so this is called the molecular formula. It says in the side of this molecule, this is the ratio of iron to oxygen. And this is going to be constant. And we've previously discussed that this ratio defines the molecule. If we change the ratio, we change the molecule. One of the things you need to be um, able to understand is that from a molecular formula, we can actually get conversion factors. So sometimes when we look at Fe2O3, really we're interested in, say, the iron or the oxygen. And we want to understand or be able to calculate specific relationship to those actual elements. A molecular formula can be used to create conversion factors that we can use in actual calculations. So an example of this is, say I have five Fe2O3 molecules and I want to know how many Fe atoms or ion atoms are inside of there. We get the ratio from the idea that this molecular formula says that in every one Fe2O3 molecule there are two Fe atoms. So if we multiply through, if we have Fe2, uh, five Fe2O3 atoms and we multiply by this ratio, there's two for every one Fe2O3, we get that inside of our five Fe2O3 molecules, we have 10 Fe atoms. So this is the idea. If I want to find out information about the Fe atoms inside of these Fe2O3 molecules, I need to come up with this ratio. It's not something I can look up. I came up with this by looking at the molecular formula, and really that's what it says. For one Fe2O3 molecule, there is two Fe atoms and three oxygen atoms inside of there. And we were able to create this ratio. So sometimes we can talk about atoms in themselves, and that's really what's going on inside of this molecular formula. It says that for every Fe2O3, there are two atoms of Fe and three atoms of oxygen. But as always, atoms are not really so interesting to us, but really what we're interested in is moles. And we can use these same conversion factors. IDEA says that for every one mole of Fe2O3, we have two moles of Fe and three moles of oxygen. So we can use this for a conversion factor. So if I say I have 1.5 moles of Fe2O3, I want to figure out how many moles of oxygen are inside of there. I use this same ratio, the ratio that I get from the molecular formula says that for every one mole of Fe2O3, I get three moles of oxygen. That's what this subscript three means inside of there. I have three times as many oxygen atoms as I do my Fe2O3 molecules. And so I'm able to make this conversion factor. So I can use atoms or I could use mole. So now that I know how many moles of Fe2O3 I'm starting with, I get this ratio from the molecular formula. I then can answer how many moles of oxygen are in 1.5 moles of Fe2O3, three times as much. So we get to 4.5 moles of oxygen.